Before introducing Carnot efficiency, Carnot cycle, and the Carnot principles, let's go back first to the definition of uh, Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics. So, following Kelvin Planck statement, if we consider a reservoir with a certain temperature TH, and a second reservoir with a lower temperature TL. If we design a heat engine running between the two reservoirs, and we are claiming that this heat engine can generate a certain power or work, work net, Kelvin Planck statement of the second of thermodynamics is telling us that there is no way to get this work net if our engine is connected only to one single reservoir. So we said that we have to pay a price, a tax to this universe, and the tax is to reject a certain amount of heat QL. Now in terms of thermal efficiency, this means that I can write the thermal efficiency for this heat engine as the work net over QH, but the first law of thermodynamics is telling me that the work net is equal to QH minus QL, so QH minus QL over QH, and therefore my thermal efficiency for this heat engine, I can write it as 1 minus QL over QH. Now, Kelvin Planck statement is telling me that this one is never zero. Otherwise, I will be violating the second law of thermodynamics. Since QL is never zero, this term is never equal to one, or the thermal efficiency is never 100%. To summarize, Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics killed our dream of designing heat engines that are 100% efficient, meaning that we can turn all the heat in here into work without rejecting heat as QL. But now that we cannot design heat engines with a thermal efficiency of 100%, there is a fundamental question. This fundamental question is, what is the maximal thermal efficiency we can get, okay? So the most important question now is that what is the maximal we can get? What is the maximal thermal efficiency we can get? For any heat engine. So, the engineer and scientist who tried to tackle this important fundamental question was Nicola Sadi Carno. He tried to tackle this in early 19th century. And to do this, he tried to imagine what is an ideal, perfect heat engine. Nicola Sadi Carno has a Persian first name, Sadi because his father was a fan of the Persian poet Sadi of Shiraz. We cannot discuss Carnot efficiency, Carnot principles without knowing more about Carnot's life. For this, you will watch now a short video from the BBC explaining Carnot's life and why he had to tackle this fundamental question that ultimately gave birth to the science of thermodynamics. This is the Chateau de Vincennes in Paris. Events here would motivate one man's journey to uncover the cosmic truth about the steam engine and help to create a new science, the science of heat and motion, thermodynamics.
in March 1814, during the Napoleonic Wars, when Napoleon and his armies were fighting elsewhere, Paris itself came under sustained attack from the combined forces of Russia, Prussia and Austria. And citizens of the city were deployed around key locations to protect them. Now, this chateau was being defended by a group of inexperienced young students who were forced to retreat under sustained artillery fire. One of them was a brilliant young scientist and soldier. His name was Nicolas Leonard Sadi Carnot. And the humiliation he felt personally would drive him and motivate him to uncover a profound insight into how all engines work. Carnot came from a highly respected military family. After the French defeat here and elsewhere around Europe, he became determined to reclaim French pride. What really bothered Carnot was the technological superiority that France's enemies seemed to possess. And Britain in particular had this huge advantage, both militarily and economically, because of its mastery of steam power. So Carnot vowed to really try and understand how steam engines work and use that knowledge for the benefit of France. He says absolutely explicitly that if you could take away steam engines from Britain, then the British Empire would collapse. And he's writing in the wake of French military defeat, and he proposes to analyse, literally, the source of British power by analysing the way in which fire and heat engines work. Living on half pay with his brother Hippolyte in a small apartment in Paris, in 1824, Carnot wrote the now legendary Reflections on the Motive Power of Fire. In just under 60 pages, he developed and abstracted the fundamental way in which all heat engines work. Carnot saw that all heat engines comprised of a hot source in cooler surroundings. Now, Carnot believed that heat was some kind of substance that would flow like water from the hot to the cool. And just like water falling from a height, the flow of heat could be tapped to do useful work. Carnot's crucial insight was to show that to make any heat engine more efficient, all you had to do was to increase the difference in temperature between the heat source and the cooler surroundings. This idea has guided engineers for 200 years. Ultimately, a car engine is more efficient than a steam engine because it runs at a much hotter temperature. Jet engines are more efficient still thanks to the incredible temperatures they can run at. Carnot had revealed that heat engines weren't just a clever invention. They were tapping into a deeper property of nature. They were exploiting the flow of energy between hot and cold. Carnot had glimpsed the true nature of heat engines, and in the process, begun a new branch of science. But he would never see the impact his idea would have on the world. In 1832, a cholera epidemic spread through Paris. It was so severe, it would kill almost 19,000 people. Now, back then, there was no real scientific understanding of how the disease spread, so it must have been terrifying. Carnot, undaunted by the risks, decided to study and document the spread of the disease. But unfortunately, he contracted it himself and was dead a day later. He was just 36 years old. A lot of his precious scientific papers were burnt to stop the spread of contagion, and his ideas fell into temporary obscurity. It seems the world wasn't quite ready for Carnot. A brilliant scientist and engineer indeed. So, 
Now, what is a Carnot cycle? The first thing we have to understand is that the Carnot cycle is an ideal cycle, meaning that there is no way for us to design and construct a Carnot cycle. But it's still an important cycle. Why? Because it gives us an idea on the maximum we can get now that we claimed that it's impossible to get 100% efficiency for any heat engine. So this means that, for example, if I start designing a heat engine, I will have to compare my actual efficiency, not with the 100%, but with the Carnot efficiency or the Carnot cycle running between the same two temperature reservoirs. And this would give me an idea if I'm really far from ideal case, or maybe I'm quite close, okay? So meaning that my cycle is well, or my engine is well designed. So the other thing with Carnot cycle, and this is the magic trick in the way Carnot tried to tackle the problem of the new maximal efficiency, is that Carnot is claiming that you can still transfer heat between two bodies, even if their temperature is the same. So meaning that their delta T is zero or approaching zero, okay? Which is not the real case in real life, okay? Usually you need a certain difference in temperature allow to allow for heat transfer. So meaning that here, when we'll be constructing a Carnot cycle, we will expect to have heat transfer at constant temperature or isothermal heat transfer. To start making or designing a Carnot cycle, let's look at this piston cylinder assembly. What do we have? We have a piston, we have a gas, and this gas is at a certain temperature TH, okay? Here I will be sketching the corresponding PV diagram. We start at a certain pressure and specific volume at state one. And we'll put a piston in contact with the reservoir at a high temperature TH, okay? Interestingly enough is that the reservoir temperature is exactly the same as the temperature of a gas. So meaning that we are claiming here that we can transfer heat at constant temperature or isothermal heat transfer. By doing this, the piston will move down, reaching state two. And we are doing this as a certain temperature TH that remains constant. After this, what we will do is that we will insulate our cylinder, okay? The consequence is that the temperature of the gas will drop from TH to TL, pushing the piston down. This will lead us to state three. And this process is an adiabatic expansion. After this, what we do now, our gas is at a lower temperature TL. What we'll be doing, we will put it in contact with a reservoir, a heat sink, at a temperature TL, which is the same temperature as a gas. So it's again an isothermal now heat rejection, okay? Here actually the piston will move up. And here the temperature is TL and will remain constant. Continue, we have to compress the gas to come back to state one. This gives us state four. And to do this, what we'll do is that we will insulate again the cylinder and we will have the temperature raising from TL to TH in an adiabatic way. So we come back to state one and this is an adiabatic compression, okay? Meaning that for a Carnot cycle, what do we have? We have two isothermal heat addition, uh, here uh, isothermal heat addition at TH, here isothermal heat rejection at TL, and here we have two processes. This is an expansion 
with Q is equal to zero, so an adiabatic, and here it's compression with Q is equal to zero. Now, this is still a heat engine, right? So this means that it still have a certain thermal efficiency, which is equal to the work net over Qn, and it's still equal to one minus our Q out over Qn. So nothing new for the moment, okay? The trick now is that the next step is that we will be discussing Carnot principles. And thanks to Carnot principles, you will see that we will be modifying this term. And this will give us a very nice compact form for a thermal efficiency, but not only for thermal efficiency, actually, specifically for Carnot efficiency. Or this will give us the maximal efficiency we can get for any heat engine running between TH and TL.